and so likes to watch because it is interesting to watch a person be torn apart and devoured. So he gets invited to go with his dark cryptid friends when they're gonna go eat people. I gotta head some fellows from a folder in this sack. That's all I can find is this man. Why is there blood on the knife, Rocky? Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this brand new day. Yesterday was quite a day. It rained most of the day here in Shelton, but when I went walkies, it was nice. Thumbs up on that. It's been wet and damp this morning. Uh, life is life there. It's, it usually rains a lot more than it has been up here in the Pacific Northwest, so yay. <laughs> Little ghost is still a little ghosting. He still struggles to breathe. He breathes through his mouth when he's sleeping. He doesn't sleep as well as he should because he has to breathe through his mouth because he can't breathe well otherwise. But when he's awake, he runs around, he drinks water, he eats food, he chews on cardboard, he digs, he burrows, he acts like a normal hamster, just a little slower, and sneezing and snurfling. So, he's not really visibly suffering, so that's a good thing. And of course, front-loading of videos, hey, if you could toss me a like, that'd be awesome. If you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be very cool. If you could leave me a comment, even for the algorithm, that would be double plus good. And I'd like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people are in fact literally beautiful and literally awesome. Hopefully, I'll be able to push through my executive dysfunction and get my list here updated for today. I am so sorry, each and every person that is a patron that I have not been able to get that done yet, hopefully today. Thumbs up on that. I have links to the patron if you'd like to become a patron. That'd be cool. I have links to my uh, disappointment PayPal, <laughs> as well as an Amazon wishlist link and my post office box, and I'll open up on camera anything anyone sends me, so thumbs up on that, and front loading a video is over. Yay! Well, good golly, Miss Molly. It was certainly a day yesterday. Yay! <laughs> thumbs up for that. Not a lot of sleeping issues. Some, I mean, I don't sleep enough at night. I can't. When I fall asleep, I don't move anymore. And one of the things is, if I have to move because I'm in pain, I have to wake up completely, turn over, and then try to fall back asleep again. I just don't move when I sleep, and that's been going on for like 20 years, so yay. So I don't get much sleep. I had some falling asleep, but I did have fun playing and recording for the channel, the Four Against Darkness game. I really enjoy playing the solo RPGs and doing them for the channel. That's a thumbs up. I am not disappointed that they are not exploding from views. <laughs> There's no issue there. There are channels that are dedicated to solo role-playing games. And they get, some of them, just hundreds of views over months. And these are channels dedicated to nothing else but solo RPGing. So, I am not disappointed if I only get, you know, like a hundred views. Because that's pretty good considering. Thumbs up for that. But, I just wanted to mention that on that. And then, for the creative thing, because when I go walkies, I do my creative thinking. I had talked with my therapist about this. I have two reactions to my cryptid stuff that let me know that I've done good. One of them is when I'm digging the dagger into open wounds and it hurts so much that I start to cry because I am hurting myself and projecting into my character so that they hurt. And when I start to cry, I know I've hit pay dirt and I've done well. The other type of reaction that I get to some things that are just equally as horrifying as the pain I'm causing myself is when I break into the horrified laughter. When it's like, oh my God, that is just awful. I have to use that. Parts of it were like understanding that, you know, the cryptids eat the homeless first, so the homeless are getting kicked down on. And that was horrified laughter because, of course, it's true. And then when I thought of, well, you know, there's governments around the world that want to get rid of dissidents and political figures and all that, they would just give them to the 
capitalist pig dogs to be broken down into snacks for cryptids. Yeah, I broke into horrified laughter at that. So, on the one hand, I know I've hit pay dirt when I start to cry because what I've done is so horrible. And on the other hand, I know I've hit pay dirt when I start to laugh because what I've thought of is so horrible. That is, once again, like the cryptid snacks. I talk about these things dispassionately. That's part of just my, my ADHD, where I am on my particular autism spectrum, being an autistic person. I get dispassionate when I talk about some things in the more scientific terms. The more interested I am, I can get more dispassionate about it that way, which shows how passionate I am about a subject. We're all weird as human beings, aren't we? But yeah, cryptid snacks are just absolutely horrifying if you look at it from the victim pool point of view, especially when you understand that the cryptid, or the urban cryptids, 99% of them that are the human and humanoid cryptids, yeah, they're always eating these snacks. And mostly these snacks are not just by products or small products, they're major products. You can break down a human being into a whole bunch of snacks. And that's just terrible. You take a living, breathing human being and boy, you've got way, how much does your hair weigh? One person, all that hair, you know, it becomes a part of the five or six ounces for a bag of candy floss, which is just human hair sprinkled with a binding agent and then sweetening made from concentrated human blood plasma. It already tastes good, now it's sweet. So yeah, our hair makes a nice snack. Then of course they pull out all the teeth and sell those as, as bags of teeth. You can get 32, 36, or however many the person happens to have. In that case, it takes a couple people to make a, a full bag of snacks, teeth snacks, if they don't have a full set. And then of course, just the larger bones are ground down into bone meal for both filler and flavor. Toenails and fingernails pulled off, ground up, mixed in with filler and bulk and crunch of fire, and they make chips. And then our smaller bones dip those in a limestone and sweetening thing, and oh, they're like little bits of rock candy. And then there's Skittles, of course, where you take the sweetener, a bit of limestone to make a wearing away shell with the calcium interior and a tiny 15cc drop of concentrated stabilized human blood at the center and then of course all the various drinks hemocola of course just being one of the experimental things on the capitalist side trying to hook cryptids on sh real sugar and caffeine and all that as well as having the human product in it so that they'll drink at the b concentrated blood plasma there are all sorts of snacks is there any other horrifying thing that i forgot here yeah, that's just some of the snacks that I, that I believe that a human body could be broken down into. And yeah, that's a lot of snacks from one person. And if you're a cryptid vision person in an urban cryptid setting, yeah, you're going to be seeing people that are people that are always eating these snacks. Even the cryptids that normally say they, they don't eat people. Yeah, they don't but they eat snacks made from broken down people. All urban cryptids, human and humanoid cryptids are constantly eating this stuff. So yeah, from a human victim pool point of view, that's just horrifying, absolutely disgusting. But from their point of view, it's they're just having a snack. And of course, it's not the cryptids that are providing this. It's the human beings that are getting the whole profit potential maximized by selling a product and good to a market. It just happens that the product is uh, us and the market is cryptids who want to eat us without killing us. So yeah, that's when I speak dispassionately, uh, that's what's actually happening. If that makes sense on that statement, make sure I'm halfway centered after I've taken my two warm shirt off. I've been moving around and so I'm pumping out the BTUs now. Some other stuff here.
My subconscious thinks about all sorts of stuff, not just one thing, it bounces and leaps. When I have mentioned that there are feral cryptids, rural cryptids, and urban cryptids, urban cryptids are halfway new. There have always been urban cryptids ever since people started gathering in settlements. Once that started to happen, there have always been urban cryptids. It's only in the past 200 years that things have really been ramping up and urban cryptids are becoming more of the norm. There is far less of an unconquered world anymore. This is why the feral cryptids are quickly dying out. But just like the rural cryptids, feral cryptids are also having children that are becoming urban cryptids. This is where Sonyo, who is a spider, cryptid that lives in Brookerton and is that is just a giant spider with a body the size of a dog you know like a German Shepherd with the larger legs and lives in out in the park areas and it while Sanyo does end up devouring quite a few human beings it's mostly just they're lonely they zap people with webbing so they can't escape and then try to talk to them because they don't just want to show up and then have to chase them down because a giant spider is talking to them. No, he'll web them and then talk to them. And if they won't calm down and stop screaming, he's just going to eat them. But occasionally he'll make a new friend, someone who doesn't freak out. So that's a good thing. And so he, his parents, he identifies as he, this gigantic spider. You know, his parents were feral cryptids, but he's urban, and if he has children, his children will be urban cryptids. So things are changing, and the rural cryptids, they generally do not eat these snacks. They are still grossed out and horrified by the general way that most urban cryptids act, and that they treat human beings as if we're just here to be eaten rural cryptids that are having to adjust to this new rural world, the changing rural world, and becoming more and more urban, so there's fewer, fewer rural, <laughs> that's hard to say, that's like a tongue twister, fewer rural cryptids and more and more urban cryptids, which the urban cryptids are still changing because our fears are still changing. But, taking a look here, seeing what else we have. Oh yes, I talk about this a fair amount, but I have to stress on this one. I like to say your mileage may vary, everything is genetic. When I talk about how there's, you know, you change, so you don't freak out when you see, you know, human beings being eaten, mind is a function of brain, and all that, your mileage may vary. Everything is genetic. You may have a set of genes expressed where you really lean into whatever it is. You may be into you know, people being devoured, or you may be on the other side of the probability curve where, yeah, it, you'll never get used to it. You'll never like it. You will be horrified by everything around you. And then, of course, there is the vast bulk on the large part of the curve. Sure, you'll be a here or here or here, but you're still in the larger normal zone. Everything is genetic in this stuff. That's why, the, though I say cryptids do not hate, because generally they don't. The, about the worst they look upon human beings is p neutral positive. That the best they're gonna think of is like, I don't think about them. I mean, they're not bad, I just don't think about them. To, you really like them, and those are the cryptids that live and and marry and breed with and have children and just are basically human except they're not. Everything is genetic, your mileage may vary and that's why one of the things I kind of miss having a writer's group because you don't get clarification and questions bounced off of you when it's just the inside of your own head and I've had the opportunity to clarify and have my mind think on questions from people in the comments who have just asked what about this what about that and I still have more questions and such I need to answer hopefully I'm going to get to them I also wanted to talk about I talk a lot about the character of Jerry Jerry Brighthammer whom I originally thought was going to be the main character of the slice of life narrative that happens in the cryptid world 
and I have since come to the understanding, no, he's not. He starts off the whole thing, but then it drifts into another main character, who's Lynn Tanner, who is a serial killer cryptid, who at the end leaves Brookerton because they're changing and they're regretting everything they've ever done. They've acted with, within their nature. They did everything right and they're still starting to regret everything. And as they say it, you know, one person was a crushing guilt, was a crushing weight of shame and guilt. Cassaway was a thousand times worse because everything he did in Cassaway, he killed over a thousand people there and put up landmine fields. He's regretting that a thousand times worse because what he did was thousands of times worse and he just has the horrible sensation he's going to regret every killing he's ever done. And who can survive the guilt and the shame of that? So they don't, Lynn Tanner just doesn't really uh, expect to go surviving uh, too much longer. And that's basically the way the, the whole narrative ends, with Lynn having to leave, with the crushing weight that's only getting worse, and there are no positive stories in the, in the cryptid world. There are no happy endings. But Jerry Brighthammer is one of those characters that they're kind of a cipher in that they're mostly a blank. They're like me. I have drifted through life, just not sticking to any of the edges. That's the way Jerry was in his life. Never had anything really good happen, never had anything really bad happen, and then one morning wakes up and wham! Extra universal chromosomes and genes are expressing and maxed out human potential for the third eye opening, cryptid vision, maxed out. You can't get any better cryptid vision and presence than Jerry has. Jerry is not really a positive character arc in that by the end of it, Jerry has just figured out how to settle into his new life and continuing just to drift a stick in a stream. They've settled into their life and now they're happy and this is their new life. Living basically the way they did before, just a new setting. Jerry doesn't grow. Jerry doesn't get better. Jerry doesn't learn anything. Jerry just settles in and continues to drift. There are no positive character arcs on the Razor's Edge. Razor's Edge in the cryptid world. The Razor's Edge is where the positive character arcs happen. As much as that's violent and such, it's still a place where hope is the main part. Everybody that gets hurt and crushed and smashed and even in Apple Rock where 15,000 people die, the people in this setting, they don't, they don't skulk and leave. They get up, dust off the blood and dirt, look at what has to be done and say, well, we need to get fixing stuff. And then they do. It is ultimately tales of, of hope and survival, whereas a cryptid world is just... There are no happy endings. There are no positive character arcs. Jerry doesn't die, but Jerry likes to watch other human beings being eaten. He can't stop them from being eaten. They're going to be eaten whether he watches or not, but he feels no fear and so likes to watch because it is interesting to watch a person be torn apart and devoured. So he gets invited to go with his dark cryptid friends when they're going to go eat people. He just drifts. This is one of the reasons it starts off with Jerry, but it doesn't stick with him as a character. He's in the background. He does a lot of things, but other characters are in the background too, like Haley, the one cryptid who has the eating disorder, like Polly, the cryptid who is trying to advocate for positive change in the cryptid world, like all of these various individuals, King Mike, the ghoul that has to try and hold this whole nightmare kingdom together. There are no positive character arcs in the cryptid world. There are no happy endings. 
And then we'll open up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. Gonna to go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I can't American Sign Language, well, <laughs> anyway, though, we have Flora Mew. Thank you very, very much. It is good to see you in the comments. I, I did answer some. Hopefully, I'll be able to push through and answer more. We have Chris. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. Good to see you. Cake, thumbs up. Thank you very, very much. And oh, yes, look up the original Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared web series. Oh my god, you will be traumatized in the very, very best way. There is J A Y, thumbs up. Thank you very, very much. Greatly appreciate it. Good to see you. Mellow Jello, thumbs up. Thank you very, very much. And I am very glad that I can help in any way. There is A, thumbs up and thank you. Kenzie, greatly appreciate it. Thumbs up. There is John Prime. And we have RJ Mitchell, always good to see you. Ben B, thumbs up and thank you. There is Ice Damon, thumbs up. Thank you much. Kryptonite, good to see you in the comments again thumbs up and then we have jesse koskinen greatly appreciated and that is it 13 people who left me comments in the past 24 hours greatly appreciated get me out of my head into the world dealing with real people if only for a short time and if only in text and of course if you've watched this far thumbs up thank you very much it is appreciated nobody's forcing you to watch the vast bulk of people don't watch after the first minute and a half so if you are one of those that watches this far thumbs up thank you much it is very very appreciated and of course, I'm going to try and get some stuff done today. I only have to edit and then upload a video after this, so I'm going to have time. Hopefully, I'm just going to be able to push through the executive dysfunction. Yay! Hopefully, you can get done what you need to get done, and if you can't, survival mode is important. <clears throat> And of course, speaking of survival mode, with all of the diseases out there, especially here in Pandemic Central USA, please take appropriate precautions for your situation and your location. You don't need to get sick. You don't need to make other people sick. Just be courteous and be smart. And of course, if you hear the mournful howl of the created cryptid bus with your name on its horn through the fog at night well it won't help to run it won't help to hide no matter where you are you're gonna get smeared it ain't gonna be pretty but at least it'll be fast so until we meet again you take care have a great day today i will see you on the flip side and that is a very good thing